Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT session on troubleshooting connectivity with hardware. Today we're going to discuss what makes a cable bad, cable testing tools, and some other tools that you can use to troubleshoot connectivity. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. And we begin with what makes a bad cable. Now, network cables can go bad or be bad without any visible indication. Or the cable may be the inappropriate cable for the application. How do you know? You know, it can be difficult to tell visually if cables are wired correctly and or if there's a break in the cable. Both of these will cause problems. How long is the cable? Is it over the maximum run length? Is the cable rated for the amount of data being run over the wire? Anything that makes the cable fall outside of specifications will make it a bad cable. Now, all of these questions can be answered with the proper tools. So let's talk about some cable testing tools. The first cable testing tool I'm going to bring up is the butt set. It's not really used for networking, but it is useful for testing plain old telephone service. It uses alligator clips to connect to and test telephone lines. Why do I bring this up? Well, because CompTIA does. Then there's the multimeter. These can be used to test for breaks in copper wiring. Good network cables have a very low resistance value from one end to the other end. Resistance, by the way, is measured in ohms. A high or infinite ohms value indicates a break in the cable. Then there are crimpers. These are used for attaching the ends onto cables. Crimpers can either be specific to a particular type of cable end, or it may work on more than one type. Now let's move on to the punch down tool. These are used to properly insert individual wires into either a 66 or 110 punch down block. A good punch down tool will actually trim the wires as they are being punched down to keep things nice and neat you'll discover that one of the most important troubleshooting tools in your arsenal is going to be the cable tester or cable certifier. Now these can be either fairly simple or very complex. Cable testers will test for continuity. Is there a break? Cable testers will test for proper pinouts. Are all the wires in the right places or are some of them crossed? Some of them will show you which wiring standard you're using. Is it T568A or T568B? Cable certifiers will test for more network related items. The speed of the wire, the duplex setting of the interface, and so on. They are used to certify a given network segment. Now let's discuss toner probes. You have all these network wires coming into one location. How do you know where they end? Well, that's where the toner probe comes in handy. They're usually a two-piece set. An injector places a signal onto the wire, and the probe detects the signal and emits a tone. Place the injector on one end, and then use the probe to trace it to the other end. Now let's talk about some cool and rather expensive pieces of equipment. There is the TDR, the Time Domain Reflectometer. It's a cable tester that can also give you the length of a segment. They can also tell you where there is a break in a segment. They're much more expensive than your standard cable tester. Then there's the OTDR, the optical TDR. Has the same functions as your basic TDR, but they're used for fiber optic cabling. Now let me give you some other thoughts. Unless you're installing cabling for a living, the most important tools that are going to be in your arsenal are the cable tester, the crimper, the punch down tool, and the toner probe. Most of the time you can make do with inexpensive tools, but if you spend a little bit more money on the tools, it will usually save you time and money in the long run. The one exception to making do with inexpensive tools is the toner probe. Inexpensive toner probes can be difficult to work with or they just plain don't work right. Something else to remember is that you can spend thousands of dollars on some of these tools and never utilize them to their potential. So think before you spend your hard-earned money. 
So now let's move on to some other tools that you can use to troubleshoot connectivity. The first one we're going to talk about is the loopback plug. This is used to test a network interface, usually on a NIC. It sends a packet out the interface and loops it right back into the interface. This is different than pinging 127.0.0.1, which will only test to see if the TCP IP stack has been initialized. It won't actually test the interface. A loopback plug will. They can be fairly easily made for unshielded twisted pair wiring and are a very handy tool to have if you suspect a bad NIC. Then there's the protocol analyzer. They're also called packet sniffers. They check a network at a very basic level. They are useful for determining the cause of network slowdowns that are not cable related. And finally, we have environmental monitors. These are used to monitor environmental factors in a given location or area. Something to remember are that electronics are designed to function within a specific environmental range. If you fall outside of that range, you may end up with connectivity problems. Now that concludes this session on troubleshooting connectivity with hardware. We talked about what makes a bad cable, some cable testing tools, and then other tools that you can have in your arsenal to help troubleshoot connectivity. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session, and I'm looking forward to doing some more.